already in reverse. <laughs> So Opal is hitting back after what was a pretty disastrous year last year, pretty disastrous year last year when General Motors left South Africa. But the Williams Hunt Group came in and are sorting everything out and they're doing quite a superb job of it. They've now come in with a bang with their flagship Grandin X, which is what I'm currently driving now. What we need to consider though, is that this SUV comes into a very tough crowd like Hyundai Tucson, Tiguan, RAV4, Kia Sportage, I mean the and the car that is based on the Peugeot 388. So it is really in for a hard run, I think. The build quality for me is a bit mixed, okay? Because you've got areas where the plastics feel great and it's and it's really it feels on par with the Thrivals, and then the areas which just feel a little bit flimsy for me and that's the problem that I have with it is is I go between like oh okay I feel like I'm in a premium car this can definitely rival a Tiguan or a Tucson and then I'll sort of go like oh no 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 it can't it, I don't think it's going to however what it does have is lots and lots of storage spaces which I love. I think it's always just so handy to have. You've got one up here, one down here, this here, this but side dory things as well are fine. So at least you've got space for everything. The boot is a decent size as well at 400, no, 514 liters, which is slightly smaller than that of the Tiguan, but still certainly big enough. The only engine on offer is the 1.6 liter turbo petrol. Uh, which is mated to a six-speed automatic transmission which is fine once you get it into the gear that you want it in but i struggle to shift it down that's just something to get used to okay that's just me probably being a bit of a spaz um next year if you want a diesel you can wait for that two liter turbo next year that will come but at the moment you've only got this engine to choose from what Opel is known for is um, specking their cars up. They're really generous with spec. So even the entry level of this car comes with things like hill assist, park assist, cruise control, climate control, um, six airbags. The list really does go on that for me, there's almost no point in getting the top of the range Cosmo unless you really want leather seats, which then I judge you. I know that it's a huge thing and everyone's like, ooh, premium. But you just get a flipping cold ass in the winter and a burning bum in the summer. I just, I, yeah, I don't get it. But if you want cool, go for the Cosmo. You'll have another two derivatives to choose from, which is the Enjoy and then the entry level model. I would go with the mid-range Enjoy because I think it's, got everything you need. I don't think you need more than what Opel already offers as standard in these cars. Oh, it's Saturday night. I paid for the wicked for the weekend. Mama, can I get another Amy? So you're going to pay just under 430,000 Rand for the entry level. Um, and then you're going to go up to 565,000 Rand for the Cosmo model. So basically for Okay, there is a lot more spec, but like, say, the alloy wheels and stuff like that, but for leather seats and stuff and a 360 camera, I don't know, things that aren't as necessary, I don't think. Oh, oh, it's Saturday night. I swear to God, I ain't getting it on a repeat. Mama, can I get another amen? Oh, oh, it's Saturday night. <laughs> Panic in the disco. So I think the Grand Annex is going to have a tough time only because of its competitors who are already very established and very good. However, with that said, this is comfortable, it's well specced, it's spacious. So it is something to consider. I think it's a lovely alternative to perhaps the other common ones that we know about.